Hey everyone, my name is Lil. Welcome back to my booktube channel and today I'm going to be talking about all of my April reads. Alright, so April was an absolute stellar month of the year. I had quite a few five-star reads, some of my absolute favorite reads of the year so far, so I'm really excited to talk about them all with you guys today. I did have 10 books that I read in April, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So my first book was an e-arc of Late Bloomer by Maisie Eddings, and this was a sapphic romance with Opal and Pepper, and it was so, so fun. Maisie always does a really great job with mental health representation, and this took place on a flower farm, which was super fun. It was kind of opposite subtract vibe. Um, they didn't really get along at the very beginning, but Opal and Pepper kind of opened each other up and really pushed each other in some personal growth aspects as well. So I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars and Maisie is always going to be a go-to recommendation from me. So this one did pub already. So if you have a chance, go and check it out. And the cover is absolutely stunning. I did a couple fun graphics over on my bookstagram that you can check out as well. My second book of April, which ended up being my favorite book of April as well, was Funny Story by Emily Henry, Who Shocked. Emily Henry is always a hit for me. I absolutely loved this one. It follows Daphne and Miles and their exes get together and then they're kind of there for each other as friends and then that friendship develops into a relationship. So it's definitely friends to lovers, opposites attract. I loved the Michigan setting. It has me really excited for my book retreat later this year with some of my friends in Michigan. So I might have convinced them to do a lot of Emily Henry themed things based off of this book and Beach Read. But I absolutely love Emily Henry's writing. It's so magical and I always can place myself into the setting and I just really loved Miles's character at the very beginning I wasn't un I wasn't very sure about him but he really grew on me I loved him of course there's some drama as always but Emily Henry's banter that she writes is always fantastic and this one was just so so fun if you really liked people we meet on vacation and book lovers, you'll likely like this one. Um, it's definitely more of a rom-com compared to Happy Place, which was a little bit more deeper, more sad. This one obviously has some sad elements, all of her books do, but it was truly such a fun time. I absolutely loved it, and an easy five stars from me. My next book I read in April was Wild Love by Elsie Silver. I started reading this a couple days after it pubbed because I'm just a sucker for Elsie Silver's writing, and I have a couple friends that I've been buddy reading all of her books with, so we buddy read this one, and it was so fun. I still gave it five stars. It wasn't my favorite Elsie Silver book, but it was such a fun time. It follows Rosie and Ford and Ford has pretty much always had feelings for Rosie so he falls first he falls hard and Rosie and Ford's relationship is just so so fun they have a lot of banter going back and forth they've known each other for a really long time Rosie comes back into town because she has some things going on in her life that she just kind of wanted to get away from as an escape and she ends up working for Ford so it is kind of like a workplace romance as well but again really fun witty banter a lot of spice in this one too small town setting and it is a millionaire billionaire romance which is also a fun time as well so five stars for me and definitely recommend the next book i read in april was a fate inked in blood this was one of my mom's book of the month picks this year i think it was this year maybe it was last year i think it was this year um it was a fun little romantic book it wasn't my favorite it wasn't a standout to me i honestly don't really remember much about it um the two main characters freya and bjorn and i'm probably not even pronouncing that right um i just couldn't really sense their relationship very well and i think there could have been a little bit more work done for the world building um but it was a fun read i'm excited for the second to read the second book just because it did kind of end up and on a cliffhanger so I'm intrigued and maybe I'll like the second one more but this one was just okay for me and it ended up being a three-star read then next up was my last five-star read of the month which was just for the summer by Abby Jimenez this is my new favorite book by her I absolutely love her writing this one follows Emma and Justin are similar because they always 
are in a relationship and once that relationship ends that person that they were dating ends up finding their true love and the one that they're gonna be with for the rest of their lives so they both kind of have this curse going on they meet through um, am I the a-hole board where Justin's talking about his situation with one of his best friends and he names his dog after the best friend because he was kind of annoyed with him um, it is a super fun book perfect for the summertime it takes place in Minnesota which is just super fun there's a lot of like lake adventures which is cool Emma is a traveling nurse and they both have some interesting family dynamics going on they're both having to deal with some hard things Emma has a mom that's really flaky Justin's taking ownership of his siblings when his mother goes to jail so it is definitely a heavy book but there are some light funny moments as well and I just had a really great time reading it and will always recommend this book so easy five stars again then I read an e-arc of The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren and wow this one was so fun it's like the perfect summer rom-com I ended up giving it four stars just because I didn't quite get that five star feeling it follows Anna and Liam which Anna always calls him West. When they were in college, they did a little marriage of convenience so that they could both afford housing. And then they just kind of, they were supposed to get divorced, but Anna did not sign the correct paperwork situation like that. So they're older now. Liam is going on a family vacation. They want to meet his wife. So he asks, Anna to do him a really big favor and come on this family trip with them so a lot of crazy family dynamics going on with his family on that trip and it's just a perfect setting they're on a private island they have a lot of fun moments and it's perfect to read at the pool or on the beach this summer so definitely recommend there are a lot of lol moments as well and I'm really looking forward to this one publishing in May actually get to meet them at an author event this month so i'm super excited for that but four stars from me and definitely one of my favorite christina lauren books next up i did an audio book of these violent delights by chloe gong this one has been recommended to me a lot by one of my really close friends and it is a romeo and juliet retelling so you can kind of guess how it is going to end and while i did really enjoy the retelling i just wasn't super invested in the story um it's definitely more of like a fantasy retelling of romeo and julia as well so um it was good just not one of my favorites in the three stars for me next up i did another audiobook of listen for the lie by amy tintera and this was for my book club that i host and it was a really fun read obviously our theme this month was a thriller and it was really fun. I loved the audiobook because they had a full cast pretty much. At least it seemed like it. If it wasn't, then the audiobook narrators did a really great job um, changing up their voices. And since there's a podcast element in the book as well, they had a little jingle in the audiobook so you knew when it was transitioning from the story to the little podcast sections of the book as well. And it was just a really fun time. I didn't guess any of the plot points and twists which was it's always a hit for me when I can't guess it it was only four stars for me because I don't know why some authors feel the need to add like a romance element into thrillers I really didn't think this needed it it definitely kind of took away from the whole book for me so four stars it was definitely really enjoyable and if you are going to pick it up I definitely recommend doing the audio next I read meet me in paradise by Libby Hubscher this book has been on my physical TBR for at least two years and I'm so glad I finally got around to it. It was good. It wasn't one of my favorites so I am kind of glad that I found it at a thrift store for just a few bucks um, because I don't think I'm going to be keeping it but I really did love the setting. It's another tropical romance. This one follows Marin and Lucas and Marin is sent on this trip under the assumption that she's going on a sisterly trip with her sister Sadie but Sadie kind of set Marin up to just do this trip on her own um you learn why later in the book but it's definitely a personal growth story for Marin and Lucas is really sweet he's always there attentive to her um there is kind of like some foolery going on um not that Lucas is like tricking Marin but he's kind of in on the whole situation with her sister Sadie and how she was set up to be on this trip 
So um, obviously there's some drama that comes along with that, but it was a really fun read. I had a great time reading it. It just was not a standout. I really won't remember it long term. And yeah, I'm just glad I read it and finally got it off my physical TBR. That's one of my things this year is to tackle this bookshelf and try to read as many of the books I own as possible. So I can say that we've done this. This was a three star read for me. Lastly, my 10th book of April was Hate Mail by Donna Marchetti. This one follows Naomi and Luca and they have been pen pals since they were in like elementary school, I think elementary school, middle school. They stopped communicating a few years back. Naomi didn't hear from Luca for a while and then two years later she's suddenly getting letters from him again but with no return address she, so she can't send any letters back. So it's kind of this whole story of Naomi trying to figure out who Luca is, where he lives, trying to get back in touch with him and obviously we learned that. I'm not going to spoil the book. Um, I did listen to this one on audio, so maybe doing an ebook would have been better for me. So it wasn't my favorite book ever. I had a really hard time staying engaged in the story and really wanting to keep listening to it. So I did only end up giving it three stars, but I'm excited to see and read future work by this author since it was her debut book. So those are all of the books that I read in April. I read two physical books. I know I held up four, but funny story was an e-arc and then um, I did a fate inked in blood kind of ebook, mostly ebook, a little bit of the physical, so I ended up counting it for ebook. I read five ebooks and then I listened to three audiobooks. Um, four of my books were library books. I saved a little over $70. I read three e-arcs. My number of pages read was 3,846. And then my average star rating was four stars, which is one of my highest average star ratings for a month so far this year. Overall, April was absolutely spectacular. I'm it's crazy that my first three reads of the month were five stars. So really happy with a big five star month. I haven't had that many five star books in a month in a long time. And they're definitely ones that are gonna stick with me for a while. So I'm really excited for May. Um, let's talk a little bit about some books that I'm really excited to read. It is already May 6th and I've already read one of my most anticipated reads for the month, which was not Safe for Work by Lindsay Lanza, and I cannot wait to tell you guys more about that in my wrap up later this month. And then I'm also looking forward to reading The Rom Commerce by Catherine Center, which is also going to be an e arc, and then A Thousand Sunsets by Kayla Martin, which is going to be a debut book for this indie author. And then finally, I'm also looking forward to reading, hopefully my loan from the library comes in for The Rule Book by Sarah Adams because I've been itching to get my hands on that and finally read it. And then I'm also looking forward to reading How to End a Love Story because I've been seeing it all over Bookstagram and it is getting so much hype. So I'm interested to see if I'm going to love it as much. My mom got it from Book of the Month. She loved it, so my hopes are high. But May is looking like it's also going to be a fun reading month as well, and I cannot wait to get to some of these books. May is just one of my favorite months of the year. Um, get a lot of beach time in, a lot of reading by the pool. The weather in Florida is already hot in this month, but it's nice to be outside a little bit more, not cooped up in the apartment. And I'm really just trying to take advantage of getting outside as much as possible. And it's officially like pretty much the start of the summer. So looking forward to May. I hope you guys all had an amazing month of reading in April and that May is even better for you. And I can't wait to see you all in my next video.